Hello and welcome back to awtoolbox.com. My name is Glenn Keller and what we're doing in this series is we are taking a look at 2506 Team Center. It has just released a couple of days ago and what we've done is we've gotten it installed. Uh, we actually upgraded a 2412 instance and we're going to take you through what we had to do to get it up and running. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at some new features and bells and whistles uh, for 2506. As you can see, that's right here. I've got the rich client in the display, as well as the active workspace environment. I can click through it. It looks very similar to the 2412 environment, but I do know of some pretty sizable enhancements in the 2506 realm. Now we are going to be talking about kind of the core applications in this video. Um, so for things like AI integration, we'll get those videos out here soon. Um, but let's take a look at 2506 as a whole in getting it upgraded from your current environment. So what we're going to do here is flip over. Uh, this one has already been upgraded. We're already sitting at 2506, everything's running. But let's take it back to our 2412 environment and we'll look at what we had to do to get it to this point. All right, so we've transitioned over to one of our other Amazon servers that is running our 2412 environment. This is what we've been creating courses on for the better part of the last six months or so. Um, we know that everything's kind of running in here. I can come in here and switch between different components. I can take a look at my author location, I can query for data, um, do all of the things that I need to do. So the goal here is that this environment has some adjustments made to it and some adjustments that are kind of partially made when we decided to go ahead and do the upgrade. So we're going to take a look at upgrading this, what it takes, what things that you should consider when upgrading the software. Um, we're going to update the deployment center build. We're going to upgrade the team center build, and we'll talk about the do's and don'ts as we go along. Um, the first thing that we have to take note of is that there is a best practice approach to an upgrade from one version of team center to another. That best practice approach requires you to um, basically take a backup of your production data. Uh, so do a dump out of your Oracle uh, database or, you know, capture your MSSQL database. Um, copy the volumes, uh, and that's one big directory uh, or multiple directories. Copy those up. Uh, that is going to be a lot of data, so make sure you partition right and make sure you look at the amount of space that you're going to need for those copies. Uh, and then make sure that you've backed up your TC data, your TC root, and any other installation directories on any servers inside of your environment um, before you begin. And it's always good to take a delta, another backup of that during your outage window right before you actually kick off. So with that being said, we've provided a few links in the course to the hardware specifications, the compatibility guides, the update upgrade guides, interoperability matrices, and definitely take a look at those Excel spreadsheets that are available on the Siemens website uh, once you've logged in, and it'll tell you kind of what you can upgrade from and what you can upgrade to without a hop. So in this case, we're kind of going from 2412 directly to 2506, which is the next version. It is a full upgrade, um, but what you'll notice is a lot of the things that those matrices will provide are things like what is the newest Java? What is the newest Oracle version? What operating system is going to support? And we were pleasantly surprised after looking at all those that none of our prerequisite software from 2412 was updated into 2506. So the version of Chrome I'm using, to the version of Java I have on the box, to the Oracle 19C uh, build that I have here, to the Windows 2019 server that I have, nothing needed updated on the back end. Java's still sitting at 17 uh, with the subsequent patch. Now in 2506, they do support upwards to 21 for Java. Same versions, Timurin, Coretto, etc. Um, we have unsupported versions of Java that have worked in the past, uh, though I don't recommend using an unsupported version of Java if you are siloed into where you can only use Oracle's Java. 
Um, that does seem to work, but again, unsupported at that case. So we went through all of these prereqs out of those matrices and we made sure that our operating system is good, our database is good, etc. The next step in a proper upgrade after you do that is to upgrade the system. Well, the best practice approach in the guides that we've linked is to create a clone or a copied environment for production and then upgrade that environment and then essentially um, do some tweaking, switch your users over, that kind of thing. What we're doing in this video is basically an in-place upgrade. So we are taking the existing environment and upgrading it to the next version. Uh, we're not standing up a test environment to test the upgrade in this one. We're just kind of going to go through the motions of it, but definitely take the pieces of this puzzle and realize that you can st stand up a practice environment, if you will, at the same version as your production environment, copy the production data into it to essentially perform a prod clone, and then do an upgrade in that location to test everything out. Get all the all the automations down, all of the things that you can streamline down, and then come back into your actual prod environment and then upgrade that or, you know, find a way to get that data over there. So in this case, we are doing an in-place upgrade. Um, what we have already done is we went to the Siemens site and we downloaded the media. So in our, in our environment, under our media folder, Siemens software, we have the TC2506 media sitting here. Uh, it does take a little bit to extract. It is a fairly large package, but if you want the Linux equivalent, you're going to choose the underscore LNX64 folder. Uh, either operating system has its equivalent installation directory. Uh, so in here, you can see it's got all of its data. And the one thing that we're going to be double checking on is in this install folder, there's a deployment center folder. So we have installed 2412 using Deployment Center. And what we need to do is upgrade Deployment Center so that we can see this data. For instance, if I come into Deployment Center right now, type in my credentials, and I go to my software repositories, you'll notice the 2506 software doesn't show even though it's in that directory. So to up Grade this will then give you access to that media. It'll also change Deployment Center to support the things that come in with 2506. So to do this, we're going to get into that uh, here in a few minutes. But to do this, we essentially just need to extract what's in here and then configure an upgrade script with the same ports and paths and permissions as we gave our original installation script for Deployment Center, we can actually use that original install configuration file as our guide to populate the upgrade file. Then we'll just CD to this directory and run the deploy file or the Deployment Center upgrade through there and we'll get the output. Once we do that, then we can go into our environment and we can add the additional media for 2506, build our deployment package, and then we'll go forward and we'll actually execute the deploy. We'll need to take into consideration customizations or enhancements that we have made to our build and make sure that those are taken into consideration. So a lot of things to get going with. The first one is going to be just as you're going into your deployment center build, again, make sure you have those snapshots, make sure that you have a backup of the data, um, follow the backup deployment center or snapshot videos that we'll be producing to take a good understanding of how to not get yourself into a bind. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna do is simply just make sure everything is down. So this can get you in, in, into some trouble with the deployment center deploy. Uh, if you ever see something like an unzip failure, it just means something's running uh, that isn't supposed to be. So I'm gonna properly log out. I'm gonna say file exit in the rich client. And then now that I've got the rich client exited, I'm gonna come in here. I don't have an active workspace running. And then I'm going to close out of my deployment center 
and then I'll go into my services and I'll start shutting down different services. So I'm going to stop the indexing service, which is my uh, solar database for searching. And then the rest of mine are all under this Team Center category. Now yours may not be. Some of these I've added Team Center to. So just take a look at which ones I have and just note that they may be named something different in your environment. So I'm going to leave Deployment Center on, the repository, the repository publisher, Deployment Center service, etc. But I am going to look at the rest of the components and start stopping those. So my dispatcher is running out of my TC root, and if I try and upgrade it, it'll block that upgrade. It'll be using it. Same with scheduler, the client as well. And these are all for async services or translating, running translations with dispatcher, uh, performing async duplication of structures, reports. The FSC I want to remain on. Now, a couple of keynotes with the FSC. If you have an FSC load balancer, or if you're coming through a proxy, or if you have some special configuration in your FSC, you need to remove that load balancer from the FSC configuration prior to beginning this deploy and make sure that you restart the FSC as well after the fact. If you do not do this, the upgrade will fail um, for the most part and it won't be able to move files as it should and that's why. All right, so we're going to leave the FSC running. This is responsible for moving files around. Uh, we're going to shut down the global search. This is probably failing because it's dependent upon that active workspace indexing service. I need the process manager to remain up. This is hosting the Active Workspace gateway. Uh, the system will shut this down and change it while you're doing the upgrade. And then the suggestion builder, I'm going to shut off. And I'm going to leave the Team Center Vault service on. You will get a failure if this isn't running. So the only ones that I'm leaving on are the FSC, the process manager, and the Vault service. Uh, I will keep my deployment center services up because that's the software I'm updating, but otherwise everything gets shut off. Uh, I do also want to just take a note that obviously Oracle or MSSQL will be running. So I'll leave those running as they'll need to be updated throughout the process. So at that point, I am going to go ahead and take a look at my task manager. You could also grep for Java or grep for TC server if you're using Linux. And what we're going to be doing is just checking and seeing if we have any Java executables running. You can see I've shut down a lot of the services, but there is one that I haven't shut down, and that's over here. And you can see there's a lot of Javas. So my Team Center Server Manager could be running as a service, but in our instance, we're running it as a startup script. So I'm going to control C that or stop the service. And what you'll see is a lot of these will go away. So I can look at these. I can see this is Deployment Center. I can see this is Eureka, which is microservices. This one is the standalone, so this is my Wildfly. Uh, this one is Eureka, so it's microservices. This one's my pool, so I'm going to go ahead and kill that one. And then I have a TCCS as well. I'm going to destroy that. That's my local FCC. So now I have it kind of narrowed down a little bit. I'm going to jump into the T's, and you can see there's a couple of hung TC servers here. If I would have stopped the server manager and let it go all the way through, these would have probably died. Make sure you use the scripts and don't just kill the processes uh, before you have to go through and do this like I have. So TC servers only. And now it should be pretty clean. Nothing should be running in addition to what I expect. I've got just a few of these here. Just double check in and we should be good to go. So in here, I've got those all shut down and I am basically ready to do my deployment center upgrade. In the next video, we will do the upgrade for deployment center, extract the data, talk about the files, make sure they're updated, uh, and then we'll take it forward and actually execute the upgrade for team center.